Hello and welcome to a special 2020 Planet Forward StoryFest grand prize announcement. I'm Frank Sesno, founder of Planet Forward and I'm coming to you from, well, my home. Normally we would see all of you at the Planet Forward Summit in Washington DC for this special announcement. We'd have speakers and panels and we'd see lots and lots of students' stories and we'd feel the energy buzzing in the room. We'd hear the excited whispers and see students banding together waiting in breathless anticipation as each category winner is announced. Next year, we'll experience that. We'll be back for that same thrill, I hope. But for now, well, let's just call this appropriate, creative social distancing. The spread of COVID-19 created a need for many to get creative. Here, we still want to afford and award our StoryFest grand prize winners as planned. So here we go. You worked hard this year and it showed. We received more submissions from more colleges and universities than ever before. East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, North, South, every region of the United States was represented through your entries. More than 200 entries altogether from dozens of colleges and universities. You experimented with media, videos, photos, podcasts, blogs, long form narrative, Adobe Spark, art. You highlighted fascinating characters and you voted relentlessly for friends and peers in that fan favorite category. So from all of us, thank you very, very much. You should be immensely proud of your work because all of us at Planet Forward are proud too of what you've done. StoryFest could not be happening without the tremendous support from our sponsors, including Lindblad Expeditions, Discovery, Comcast, the Walton Family Foundation, National Geographic, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN, the Arizona State University Global Futures Laboratory, Three Degrees, Middlebury College, and of course, the George Washington University, where Planet Forward is headquartered and housed. As you know, this year our grand prize is a storytelling expedition with our friends and partners at Lindblad Expeditions. We are monitoring travel updates, as you can imagine, based on the spread of COVID-19. As of this time, our expedition to Iceland, which was scheduled for this summer, is on hold. And while we can't predict the future, we're working actively with the Lindblad folks and thinking creatively to determine alternatives. So as they say in the business, stay tuned. For now though, our focus is on StoryFest finalists and the winners. This year's competition featured six categories, great categories, draws out so much creativity, best written article, best video, best short or shareable video, best multimedia story, by the way, that includes podcasts, best photo essay, and the coveted fan favorite award, where the entry in any category with the most upvotes on planetforward.org will be awarded a grand prize as well. So without further ado, let's get to it. In our first category, students use that versatile, expressive, precise, beautiful old standby, the written word, to bring us into their communities, introduce us to compelling characters, making a difference, and offer solutions to the problems we face. So here are our finalists for the best article. <music> from the people. Brooke Bowser from University of Wisconsin-Madison chronicles how citizens in one Michigan community work together to convert their streetlights to solar power. Northwestern University Natalie Chun interviewed educators from nearby Illinois high schools to discuss how they're keeping climate in the curriculum. Everything's bigger in Texas, even renewable energy. Cody Clark from Texas Tech University reports on the use of wind turbines in the Lone Star State. Mahalia Dryak from Reed College writes about the urban heat island phenomenon and offers solutions for how busy cities can find their cool. Scarlet macaws are colorful, intelligent, and under attack. Greta hardy Mitel from Carleton College reports on a couple working to protect macaws populations from poaching. Princeton University student Alexander Gutdiner shares the way he feels grounded in observing our flying feathered friends. 22-year-old native activist Ruth Miller is one of many young people fighting for a better future. Anthony Carambellas from Cal State LA tells her story. As climate change creates vast ripples in the world's oceans, Matilda Kreider from George Washington University covers the advantages of small-scale fisheries. Despite being surrounded by water, Florida is drying up. SUNY Purchase student Brendan Rose writes about the depletion of the state's aquifer and what action can be done to stop it.
And the winner is Greta Hardy Mitel from Carleton College. Her piece called A Society for the Birds. And you are our grand prize winner in the best article category. So congratulations. Oh my gosh. Wow, thank you so How, much. How's that feel? <laughs> that feels pretty great. It's nice to have some good news in all of this. <laughs> it's nice to get good news, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Well, what what inspired you to, to write about macaws and birds? So I, I mentioned this, I think, at the end of my article. I volunteered at the, at the research station where um, the piece that I was writing about, and I really did fall in love with the birds. Um, they're beautiful, um, as I write about, and just, like, super like have the super personality um, and the chicks are adorable. And I really felt a personal connection to the work by the end. Like every chick that we saved and like relocated was as if it was like a baby to us. I, I love what you wrote. You open your article with these words. Those lucky enough to spot, spot a scarlet macaw in the wild will likely just see a flash of crimson coupled with a sharp squawk from the sky, but up close, macaws are big, boisterous, blaring birds painted with rainbow colors. So you, you write in this wonderfully expressive way. What was the most challenging part of writing this story, of capturing this, this whole story out there? The story's gone through so many different iterations. Um, it started, I started writing it while I was in Peru, um, working there. So about a, a year before I eventually submitted it. I think it's, it was hard, like, writing about something that was so personal to me and that I had been, like, immersed in for three months. Um, and then, but, like, communicating it to an audience who probably has never seen a macaw or maybe doesn't even know that much about macaws. What do you hope your story uh, tells people and inspires them to, to do or to think or in different ways to act, perhaps? I think um, there's a lot of sad stories about um, about conservation biology right now and species going extinct and becoming the last of their kind. There are really innovative scientists out there um, who are doing this work and who are going to, like this, this project has um, basically like the project has finished um, this specific like relocation project and now it's going to be able to be implemented implemented in places where macaws are endangered and that's really inspiring to me and I hope it will inspire other people. Well what I love about your story is yes it's inspiring, yes it's informative, it makes science real, you take characters, you have characters in your story, they're your scientists and they're these wonderful birds and chicks and foster parents and uh, you have informed us and you have inspired us. But congratulations on being the grand prize winner in this category. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, I'm still reeling from it. <laughs> well, I'm sorry we're not together on stage as you, we would have been if we were all together. We would have done a real high five here. <laughs> you can do it. A screen high five. High five. There we go. <laughs> all right. That's awesome. Well, congratulations again. Thank you so much. With audio, video, and photo technology at our fingertips, there have never been more ways to craft a story. So we challenged our storytellers to utilize a combination of these tools in our multimedia and podcast category. Ever consider that pests may actually be protecting you? Deep D. Bansal Gage of George Washington University explores how different species are essential to key functions of human life. Emily Mortensen from SUNY New Paltz interviews a local mushroom cultivator and head brewer who shares the creative, sustainable ways businesses can utilize waste products. Amanda is in the process of growing edible and medicinal mushrooms from spent grains and coffee grounds. We've all heard save the bees, but Arik Palilio from SUNY ESF asks, which bees? in his podcast, Exploring Colony Collapse Disorder. Between 2006 and 2007, U.S. beekeepers noticed a large number of their hives had been lost seemingly overnight. Lucy Rochett spoke with four fellow students at Middlebury College to learn how the environment is changing in their hometowns across the country and what obligation they and the schools they go to have to stop it. Fish finding homes in the desert? Dylan Simard from Arizona State University shows it's more likely than you might think. And we build these and then sink them in the lake to provide structure for fish to live in and around, uh, to forage, and to raise their young in. Inspired by Dr. Seuss's The Lorax, GW student Lizzie Strickland created the character Potomax 
to advocate to young readers on behalf of the Potomac River. As sea level rise threatens coastal communities across the globe, Avery Van Etten from Northwestern University takes a deep dive into the surging problem in the Florida Keys. Scientists agree that sea level is rising. The tricky part is that it's basically impossible to predict the exact amount it will go up at any specific time. This can make planning for the future challenging. And the winner is Avery Van Etten from Northwestern University. Sea level rise threatens the Florida Keys. This is such an important story and happening in Florida and a lot of other places around the world. But in the story, the question is how will rising sea levels transform lives for Floridians who call the Keys their home? Avery creates a rich soundscape in her three-part podcast. It takes a deep look at the systemic issues as people prepare communities environmentally, financially, and even socially for a future that could look very, very different. The judges were very impressed with this story. Judge Gina Murphy-Darling, founder of Mrs. Green's World podcast, says, as a podcaster, I was blown away by the quality of Avery's podcast. She passed the first test of good podcasts. I wanted to keep listening. Also, her use of outside experts was impressive and effective. And last but not least, the entire multimedia package was beyond impressive from where I sit. She said, Avery is ready for prime time. They say that seeing is believing, which makes photojournalism a fitting antidote for climate denialism. The finalists in this photo essay category did some amazing things as they angled their lenses toward rising tides, innovative agriculture, and people who take environmental action into their own hands. Some activities are good for body, mind, and planet. George Washington University student Ariel Bader captures the souping garbage man helping to clean the Potomac River one paddle at a time. Angelica Gonzalez from SUNY Environmental Science and Forestry shares sites seen and sustainable lessons learned from her time with people in Ghana. Hurricane Sandy flooded the coastal Connecticut hometown of George Washington University student Matilda Kreider. Through her experience, she explores sea level rise and the investment in seawalls. Eckerd College student Paulina Oswald captured moments from Florida's seaside seabird sanctuary, where staff works to rehabilitate birds from mostly human-related injuries. U.S. national parks are more than road trip destinations. They're hubs for biodiversity. Meg Rossi from SUNY ESF explores the impact of human disturbances on these sites. While many of us feel overwhelmed by the threat of climate change, Keaton Smith of Middlebury College journeyed to a local dairy farm to get in touch with agricultural understandings of the circle of life. Kate Twining Ward from the George Washington University wields her camera to bring us up close to our distant primate cousins, chimpanzees, and the communities working to protect them. And the winner is Kate Twining Ward, the George Washington University, clinging on to chimps, why you should think of chimpanzees during the climate crisis. If the pictures in this story don't get you, nothing will. As our closest living ancestors are vanishing, could we possibly be next? Are there lessons to be learned? What do we take from their experience? Well, Kate Twining Ward introduces us to the chimpanzees in Sierra Leone, where she studied. Their natural habitats are quickly diminishing due to climate change and other challenges. And the lessons this special species can teach humans as our own habitats get changed are kind of compelling and personal. You'll see for yourself. The judges were impressed. Judge Aaron Heath, a former journalist and current associate director at the American Association for the Advancement of Science, AAAS, said this, a compelling and well-sourced narrative underlies Twining Ward's striking images of endangered chimpanzees. Her talent for photography is clear. So is her passion for the subject. Congratulations. Social media, a vital tool for climate communication, but it challenges storytellers to get their message across more quickly, more concisely than ever before. Oh, by the way, and more accurately, that matters too. The finalists in our short and shareable video category taught us something new. 
in just two minutes or less. One contributor to greenhouse gas emissions? Cow burps. GW student Francesca Edrelin discusses a surprising solution. How switching livestock to a seaweed diet could help. We all know that plastic bags are bad if they're not recycled, reused, or disposed of properly, but are the alternatives any better? GW student Caroline Im shows that the solution has less to do with the materials than how we use them. Urban farming offers a solution for communities plagued by food deserts. Jake Myers from University of Arizona brings lessons home from the Kenyan city of Nairobi. Plastic isn't going anywhere, so we ought to put it to use. Jess Mackler from GW highlights Precious Plastic, a company that's reusing plastic waste in innovative ways. And the winner is Jake Myers, University of Arizona. Can urban farming feed the future? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, that's, that's good. good. Not short on words, sorry, but... <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. You can be short on words. That's, that's fine. Let it sink in. <laughs> what was the most important part of that story that you wanted to get across to people who are watching it? This wasn't just an example of a, a really innovative farmer doing one small thing in one small place. This is very scalable and very urgent. Um, small scale farming needs to happen and urban farming needs to happen if Africa is going to feed itself as population grows. Um, and I think it's just so scalable and so incredible that he can grow so much on just a quarter hectare of land. Grow some vegetables or grow some fruit. Jake, your area of study is what? I study uh, the nexus of climate adaptation and food security. So I don't hear the word storytelling in your area of study. This is not your focus. So how did storytelling and communicating this stuff become so important to you? So I started my career out in uh, Peace Corps and then moved on to Fulbright. And both of those are cross-cultural exchange programs. And they both kind of root storytelling at the root of um, how do we exercise empathy? How do we get Americans to care about other cultures and those people um, to kind of understand what America uh, is like? And so the ability to, I kind of started using storytelling as a way to find out effective solutions to some complex problems. And asking people to tell me their story um, was a really effective way to finding out what might work differently this time. And so I've kind of kept storytelling at the root of how I approach my career. Um, it's a great survey tool and it's a great way to find solutions. Thank you so much and congratulations again. Yeah, thank you so much look for I look forward to it, yeah. This is an awesome um, opportunity for us to get to know and travel with you. And I hope a great opportunity for you to do some more of your great storytelling. Yeah, very appreciative of everything you've done with Planet Forward and I'm excited to keep going. So are we. Congratulations, Jake. Thank you. And the finalists in our video category. Well, they immersed us in the sights and sounds of deserts, shorelines, farm fields, and introduced us to student activists and innovative scientists. One man's trash is another man's tourist attraction. Lindsay Eberhardt from SUNY ESF takes us on her journey to explore the implications and appeal of Brooklyn's Glass Bottle Beach. We know life needs light and water, but what if the former could lead to the latter? Jordan Elder from Arizona State University reports on an innovation that uses solar energy to create clean water. The kids are all strike. George Washington University student Francesca Edrelin interviews teenage activists participating in weekly Friday for Future demonstrations in Washington, D.C. Eckerd College enacted its Break Free from Plastic Pledge at the beginning of this year, making it the first college to do so. Student Ann Flaherty takes us into the midst. 
While the cattle industry is a significant contributor to greenhouse gas emissions, Caroline Hedgecock of University of Wisconsin-Madison reports on the carbon negative practices of the Crave Brothers Farmstead. Oysters are an essential element to the culture and climate of the Chesapeake Bay. GW student Sarah Noyes covers research done at the university and on how the species is affected by agricultural runoff. The wall on the U.S.-Mexico border divides ecosystems as well as nations. Jake Myers from the University of Arizona takes us to the Organ Pipe Cactus National Monument, where activists protest to protect the 100-plus endangered species that call that place home. We all have guilty pleasures. Cheeseburger-loving Sarah Sem from George Washington University explores meatless alternatives to indulge in her go-to treat. And the winner is Sarah Sem, George Washington University. What's the beef with meatless burgers? Here's a story that grabs everybody's attention. With the addition of the Beyond and Impossible Burgers and all the others to menus across the country, plant-based burgers have become increasingly popular. Well, Sarah put the hype on hold and investigated both the environmental and health marketing claims made by these companies and used a little humor to keep you watching. Lately, I've been looking into plant-based options like the Beyond Me and Impossible Burgers. They taste like the real thing, and I think they can help our planet. But I want to play devil's advocate. Are these products really healthier and more sustainable than meat? If I want to reduce my carbon footprint, I'm going to need to <sighs> cut back on the cheeseburgers. Well, the judges got a kick out of all of this. Judge Simon Hernandez Arthur, media relations manager for the Nature Conservancy, said Sarah Sem's look at plant-based burgers deftly combines offbeat humor and good old-fashioned reporting. Sem's enthusiasm and self-professed love of burgers is contagious, and viewers walk away having laughed and actually learned a thing or two about an increasingly popular sustainable food trend. And now for our fan favorite category, which gives every single StoryFest entrant the opportunity to win a spot on our storytelling expedition. You just have to rally your friends, family, professors, the checker at the supermarket, whatever, to go vote for your story and vote at planetforward.org. That's what people did. You have through April 2nd. We count the votes and we come up with the fan favorite. So without further ado, the story with the most votes, Planet Forward StoryFest 2020 is... Deepti Bonzel Gage from the George Washington University. Wait before you squish that bug. Deepti used Adobe Spark in a unique way, telling a series of short stories which detail the importance of biodiversity and a healthy ecosystem using a series of examples. The judges were impressed again. Deepti's piece, which also happened to be a finalist in the multimedia category, really raised some eyebrows. Judge Larry Evans said there was much to enjoy in this multimedia story, including Gage's spectacular photographs. Once again, I want to thank every single student who entered our StoryFest competition this year. You worked hard on your stories and it showed. Your entries inspired us with the ideas that they captured, the characters they portrayed, the data they used, the stories they told. We hope you will continue to find and tell stories about the ideas, inventions, and innovations that can lead to solutions. In these unprecedented and difficult times, it's more important than ever to use the power of storytelling to convey hope and to inspire. So hold your friends, family, and community close. We're all stronger when we do that. And tell those stories. On behalf of the entire team at Planet Forward, our partners and our sponsors, our schools, and our students everywhere, thank you. Stay well, stay strong, and do everything you can to move the planet forward.